The Web 3.0 in crypto space holds limitless possibilities to change the world with this new technology. But looming on the horizon could be one major threat that could completely undermine the long-term value proposition of blockchains entirely. And that's with quantum computing, a rapidly advancing sector in tech that could potentially disrupt many different fields. And there are many people out there who are particularly concerned for its impact on blockchain technology and cryptocurrencies and whether they're going to make them completely obsolete or not. Well, in this video, I'm going to outline the exact threat that quantum computers hold for both cryptocurrencies and blockchain technology and whether it really matters or not. Okay, I'm going to talk about this as a blockchain developer myself who works this technology on a daily basis. So if you're new around here, hey, I'm Gregory, and on this channel, I turn you into a blockchain master. So if that's something that you're interested in, then smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to this channel. And if you want to know how to become a blockchain master step-by-step from -step start to finish, then head on over to adaptuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. All right, so let's get into this. Let's talk about quantum computers and are they a major threat for cryptocurrencies or not? You know, does this really even matter? So one of the reasons I'm making this video is I get this question all the time. And so I wanted to make this video to outline my thinking on this and set the whole situation straight here. So let's start off with the basics. Like what is a quantum computer in the first place? Okay. So I, I'm, I'm going to do my best to explain this. Okay. Because there's a full disclosure, uh, you know, I am a blockchain developer who works this particular technology on a daily basis, but I'm not a quantum computing expert, but I do understand the fundamentals and I'll try to do my best to explain those, particularly as how they are related to cryptocurrencies themselves. But essentially a quantum computer is a very advanced computer compared to what you might call a classical computer, which is probably most computers that you're used to using right now. You know, where you're watching this video, for example. And quantum computers have the potential to do something very powerful, like way beyond what classical computers that we know and use today are, are even capable of doing. So how does that work? Well, that's because at the fundamental level, they, they get their computing power from the quantum level. I'm talking like the atomic level, the subatomic level, like the atoms and quarks that make up, you know, everything that you see around us. So basically, if you think about, you know, any electricity that you use today that's based upon waves or like any type of, um, you know, cla any type of classical computer that uses electricity at the very lowest level, right, you have this thing called a bit, okay? And this bit can really just have two states, either on or off, one or zero, okay? So in quantum computing, you actually have a, a qubit, okay? So what you're able to do with that is have multiple states, okay? Because in quantum computing, you have this thing called superposition, which is a fundamental principle where much like waves in classical physics, and so without getting off into the weeds, instead of just having these two valid states in the classical computing with bits, you have these qubits that are basically capable of way more combinations at the smallest level. And those are the fundamentals that give them the potential edge versus the computers that we know and use today. All right, so let's talk about how they intersect with cryptocurrencies and why does this even matter? Well, like I was saying before, you know, quantum computers have the potential to do some things better than regular classical computers. Now there's a debate about quantum supremacy and whether they're going to be better at everything in every single way. But one key area to watch out for is their ability to factor very large numbers, okay? And this actually has a bearing on encryption itself. Once well, so one area they have an edge is breaking encryption, since the RSA family of encryption depends on factoring large numbers in exactly this manner by using Shor's algorithm here, that eventually with enough quantum computing power, you might be able to do things like break RSA encryption. And not just RSA encryption, that's not the only encryption standard out there, but also elliptic curve cryptography, which is largely used by many blockchains and other cryptocurrencies out there. All right, so let's pedal that back a little bit and talk about encryption in the first place. What is it? Why does it matter? How exactly does quantum computers, how exactly do quantum computers threaten that? Well, encryption is a way of really just hiding information or, or you know, making it where other people can't see what the information actually is. So you can see an example of here, uh, my computer here, this is the Wikipedia page. If I put in this message, you know, hello, I can turn it into something that looks like this, that someone, if they had this information, like in transmission, they couldn't understand that the original message here was hello because it's been encrypted. And whenever it gets encrypted, it gets run through an algorithm, okay? It's just the same that a computer does to obfuscate this message. And depending on, you know, which encryption algorithm you're using, you might be able to decode that message if you had a proper key. So encryption is at the heart of how blockchains work, okay? You know, crypto is the base for cryptocurrency. We use encryption anytime we're signing a transaction, we're sending cryptocurrency from one account to another. Let's say you got a MetaMask, okay, and you sent, you know, cryptocurrency from, you know, your wallet to mine. Well, you'd sign a transaction and that's how the blockchain knows that you're authorizing that transaction to essentially take, you know, money out of your account and give it to my account. That's called, it's called public key cryptography. That's how your public key and your private key pair works. You sign things with your private key or authorize them. You know, similarly, at the uh, base level of the blockchain, how it builds the public ledger, 
you know, every transaction that you create gets, you know, grouped together into bundles of records that are called blocks, which are chained together to make up the blockchain. Okay. And then how those blocks are actually linked together is based on a hash for the previous block. And every time you generate that hash, okay, that's going through an encryption algorithm in order to secure all that information so that it's okay to put it out there publicly on the actual open ledger. And so that's just a couple examples of how we use uh, cryptography with cryptocurrencies and also blockchains. And so the potential threat to all of this from a quantum computing standpoint are these particular encryption algorithms that do exactly what I'm talking about. Basically, if you take information, you run it through an encryption algorithm, and then you get this encrypted information, that that actual process itself could be compromised. Essentially, because blockchains are using classical computers that you're running these algorithms, and you have these quantum computers that could potentially get powerful enough to break the encryption that secures the blockchain itself. All right, so now all that sounds like a pretty scary proposition. Basically, you kind of might have this vision of a mad scientist with this really powerful computer you know, inside of his laboratory, who's just ready to take down, you know, the entire Bitcoin blockchain, okay, with his quantum computer. So is that a distinct possibility in my mind? Am I, am I personally worried about this? Okay. So, you know, the short answer really is no. Okay. So what's the long answer? Why do I think that? So the first big reason is, well, let me preface by saying, you know, there's all these debates on, like, like I said, whether quantum computers really will be, you know, achieve quantum supremacy and, and you know, get better than all classical computers in every single way, or if it's really just going to get better at one particular thing that compromises the value proposition. Let's just let's just settle that debate for now, or not even pretend like it exists. Let's just say everybody's greatest fear is realized and that we actually get this quantum computer that everybody's worried about, okay? So the first thing is that right now, we're not even close to there yet, okay? So this superposition thing that I was talking about for quantum computers is something that's actually really challenging to stay in for long periods of time, okay? And a lot of the quantum computers we have now are really brittle and aren't even close to the type of capacity that we need in order to undermine blockchains. Now, I'm not saying we can't get there at some point, but for right now, that's not really the state of commercially available quantum computing that we really know about. OK, so I'll talk about that here in a minute. That's an asterisk. So the second thing is, is like if we ever get to that period where we are getting close to having quantum computers that could potentially break encryption, uh, OK, then you've got the ability to you know, basically attack that problem from both sides. So you could essentially create quantum resistant cryptography. All right. So if we have these encryption algorithms that are run by class computers, we can likewise have, you know, encryption that's run by quantum computers to accomplish the same types of tasks. So, you know, if somebody else has the power, then we can just have a defense that's created by the same power. Let's talk about that with a caveat, because, you know, before I talk about quantum computers have a long way to go, you could create quantum resistant technology. So the other thing is that we don't exactly know 100%. We're not 100% sure that there's not actually somebody out there with a quantum computer right now that's capable of what I'm talking about. So here's why. Let's think about somebody who's really well-funded, who wants to stay under the radar, or potentially even a, an intelligence agency of some kind. Because think about it from a game theory perspective, okay? If you had a quantum computer that was capable of all this type of stuff, okay, and you could essentially crack any internet password any bank encryption, you know, any anything that you want to, nuclear codes, and you could potentially do all this stuff undetected under the radar and use this power for whatever you wanted to. You would have such a massive advantage in international warfare and so many other things like you're probably not just going to use it to go crack a public blockchain for a couple reasons. Like number one, it's going to be out there in the open and pretty much everybody's going to be able to detect that you did it. Like let's say you used a quantum computer to move Satoshi's Bitcoins. Well, that's going to become a complete public spectacle, which could potentially draw attention back on yourself. All right. So you're not going to just show your cards if you have this power that you could use for so many other purposes. Okay. The other reason is that if you're going to go, you know, compromise a big blockchain like this, like whatever cryptocurrencies you're going to potentially exploit in this case for financial gain, like the value of those assets is instantly going to tank. Of course, you might say that you could open a short position before you did something like that. But the whole point is like, it's going to be incredibly hard to monetize that type of exploit. And then once you do, you're going to show your cards that you have something like this. And there's probably way better ways that you could use this to your advantage rather than just targeting blockchains. And so for all those reasons, I really don't think that we have a major threat for quantum computers uh, with blockchain technology and cryptocurrencies at this point in time. Simply, I don't think quantum computers are really sophisticated enough yet, at least the commercially available ones, uh, in order to threaten cryptocurrencies. 
I don't think we're even close to that happening. You know, we can always create quantum resistant technology in the future. And if somebody out there actually has a powerful enough quantum computer to compromise our blockchains, they're probably going to use that power for something else rather than just take down crypto. So hope you like this video. You know, as always, smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. They really up these videos out so that more people can learn about blockchain. And if you're as fascinated with this technology as I am, you want to get your hands dirty, how can you get started today? You can go to my YouTube homepage. You can find those free courses there. They're like Udemy courses, but they're totally free. And if you like those and you want to take the next step, or hey, maybe you want to take a master shortcut entirely, I can show you how to master blockchain step-by-step -step start to finish over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. You don't have to be an expert to get started today. I've helped people with zero coding experience become real-world blockchain developers, you know, land their first blockchain developer job in a matter of months. So that's all I've got. And until next time, thanks for watching Dapp University.